Hey YouTube, what's going on? SciGuy29 coming at you here. A little different angle today uh, because of the video that I'm making. Um, this is a video to commemorate one of the greatest basketball wins in Iowa State basketball history. On this date in 1957, January 14th, 1957, uh, Wilt Chamberlain and the number one Kansas Jayhawks came to Ames. And they had to come to the armory which is where the Cyclones played their games at that time. And I've showed this before, but this is a picture of what it looked like that night. And it was packed. Now, the place only seated like 7,500. It was a cold January night, I know. And uh, the Cyclones ended up winning. Now, that by itself is not reason for a video. It is, but it, it's not the only reason I'm doing it. I'm going to share a special collection that I have from that night. Um, and I've shared a couple of things from it before when I talked about um, Gary Thompson. Uh, was really Iowa State's biggest basketball name uh, up until the 80s. Uh, but uh, I kind of wanted to show this angle for many reasons. Um, Iowa State's only beaten the number one team in the country twice in their existence. Uh, they beat Kansas 1957, and this team right here, this autographed poster's from. That's actually my daughter. She let me move it downstairs. Um, they beat number one Oklahoma and Buddy Heald uh, just a few years ago back in Ames. Both games were names, obviously. Um, but really cool uh, what I have to show you next. Now, the next things I found uh, in an auction. At first, I'm like, God, what am I doing? I put a bid in, did it anyway. Um, but I got this stack of negatives. Now, as you can see, okay, they're actually photo negatives, but they're bigger than usual. And they printed off into really dark prints, but I'm going to show them to you a little bit. Uh, just because uh, these are some shots that I'd never seen before from that game. Uh, they're similar to some that you can find in the digital collection at Iowa State, but different in the standpoint of slightly different angle, different content. Uh, the first one I kind of thought was kind of funny, and it's kind of fun. I had the opportunity to go over and talk to Gary Thompson. Um, oh, it's been three years ago now, I think, when I got these, three or four years ago, and just to talk to him about that game that night and uh, to hear him talk about it, it was kind of funny when I showed him this slide. Immediately, he looked at those two officials, called them by name, uh, said what he thought about him. One he liked, one he really didn't. Remember, this was back in the day when there was only two officials. But you can kind of see Cy the mascot there in the middle uh, with the two officials. That is a pregame look. Got the cheerleaders out on the floor. Kind of a cool look. Um, let's see. I did not put these in order like I should have before. Here's the smaller version of the print I showed earlier of the crowd. And let's see. A little more close-up. Crowd, some of the students. I love the, the look. The It's obviously 1957. There's no doubt about it. You can tell. Um, this is kind of funny. As you look at this, this is uh, the Cyclone team huddle. Uh, this is at halftime, I was told, uh, by Gary, is what he remembered it being anyway. Um, and when you look at it, you see all the people in street clothes and go, what the hell's going on? But uh, they were just off of outside the locker room at halftime. Um, this is post-game after they'd won. Now, the final score of this game was 39-37, so a real barn burner. But Iowa State had tried to run with them uh, in previous games, and it didn't go well. They'd played them just a few weeks earlier. Uh, the Big 12 always used to have a holiday tournament down in Kansas City, and they'd played in the finals of that. And Kansas won, I, I want to say by like 12, 13, somewhere in there. Maybe it was even more than that. But I know it was close for a while, but not for, for very long. Definitely not at the end. But um, here are some more of the shots here. Love the old Chuck Taylor high tops there. Here is a shot of the Kansas huddle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, they had a man by the name of Wilt Chamberlain. Kind of good. Maybe you've heard of him. But uh, we'll get to a few of those pictures here. You can kind of get an angle of, of how things were set up. The, you know, the fans were right there 
on the floor. You can see the bench where the players would have sat. And uh, <clears throat> Mr. Thompson said how horrible it was. The opposing teams hated coming there because there was no space. It was right there. It was the fans and then you. So um, let's see, which ones do I want to go with? We'll go with this one next. Uh, here's just a regular shot. Wilt trying to reach in there. You can kind of see him in the background. Got a couple better ones coming up here. Um, this is a shot of Wilt. You can see how many Iowa State guys are around him. Uh, Iowa State obviously had nobody seven foot. I think their tallest starter was six six. Uh, just another reason they had to uh, slow it down and try not to uh, get in a running match with them or a scoring fest. Uh, another shot of, of Wilt there, I'm pretty sure. Yep, that's Wilt going in to score two. He was Kansas' leading scorer, uh, but they basically double teamed him. They almost did like a, a triangle and two on him a lot of the night, the way it sounds. They didn't specifically call it that in the article or anything, but that's kind of what it was. And there's another action shot. Love seeing the official right there buried under the basket. Couldn't see much of anything, obviously. Take advantage of Wilt not being there to block the shot. And then this is uh, the shot that I'd shown before, and I'll show a larger version here. That is Wilt and uh, Gary Thompson underneath. And I have this. Signed by Gary Thompson in silver. And there's Wilt, Gary, kind of hiding underneath. Uh, and it was fun listening to him talk about this. He said, you never wanted to get anywhere near his elbows because they would cut you and you'd be done. And he said it would be bad. He said, so, you know, I ended up down there. Shot got missed. Uh, and, and I was just covering up for dear life, basically. So it was kind of fun listening to him talk about that. Um, one other cool story he said was, uh, and, and there's articles that have been written about this, are, are how good of friends Gary Thompson and Wilt Chamberlain became. Uh, they, they were both All-Americans, both ended up playing on some college All-Star games and talking about that. So it was really kind of neat to uh, just be able to hear about that. Uh, and he and uh, Gary and his wife remained friends uh, till through Wilt's passing, and even since uh, Wilt's pass, I can't remember. I, th I think Wilt's wife has since passed away too. Gary's still alive, lives in Ames. Uh, there are four or five members of Iowa State's team I know. Uh, the coaching staff has all passed away. Uh, I'd love to find some other items from those guys, but um, there was a, a seller that had some stuff on oh a year ago or so, maybe even the right at the start of the pandemic, but um, just couldn't talk him down out of the price for what I was willing to, to pay for uh, the items they had. And they were, and they were just index cards uh, that the, the person had sent or the person's father had sent uh, in the 50s. So just wanted to commemorate this. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have questions or comments down below. You have stories on any of these guys. Um, would love to hear them as well. So till next time, remember, collect what you love, love what you collect.